Okay, so uh, since the last video, I changed the zoom level uh, to be bigger so that it'll be easier to see on video. Um, to me, it's huge, but hopefully it's easier for for you if you're watching on YouTube. All right. Um, let's see, the last time we added mongoose. I also added a start script to call Nodemon with npm, but um, that currently is not that important right now. You can just run Nodemon. But in this video, we're gonna set up our database, so which will live in the models folder. And first things first, we actually need to add files to it. So models index.js. There we go. All right. Um, let's see. So we need to import mongoose, require mongoose. Um, let's close that. I don't think I mentioned this earlier, but uh, for the nodes import um, syntax, if you don't have a relative path, it'll automatically look into node modules. Then if you do a dot slash, it will look into your own project directory to, to find the correct um, files. And then I normally set Magus um, debug to true. That's just so that uh, it'll log out every transaction inside the database so you can actually see what's going on without testing it um, through your API. And we're gonna set it to true. That's that's what I meant to say. We're also gonna set Mongoose promise promise to the global promise, and all that does is makes is allows us to use promises with Mongoose, and which means that asynchronous um, JavaScript will be easier to handle through code and much more readably. And then lastly, we need to connect. To the, to the database. Connect. Um, your database name would be something like this. So MongoDB um, colon slash slash localhost. Uh, localhost is your name. And then I think it's a colon. It's either a colon or a slash. Let's go with slash for now. Um, and then you can name your your database whatever. So this is the name of your database. I'm gonna go with vote for now. And with that, we are connected to to the database. So if we just do um, if we just import our own database here, const db equals uh, require. And remember it's inside of models and because it's index.js we don't have to handle the, the exact path and if we start the server now it should throw an error because yep there it is because we need to actually start our database uh, let's get rid of that clear and to do that, you just run mongod in your terminal. It's best to do it in a terminal that's outside of your project so you don't accidentally close this. Um, and just leave it running in the background. So now, if we restart the server, everything's fine. All right, let's actually do something useful with this. So. For this application, we're going to need two sets of data. Um, we're going to need user data, which will live in a user.js file. And we're also going to need uh, polls, because that's what you vote on, poll.js. And those two files are also going to be in models. Okay. 
and then we're gonna export them individually here in your index.js so exports dot what's the name of it we have user required dot slash user and we also have polls so So here we're importing the files in the current directory of models, user and polls. Uh, you don't have to add the JavaScript extension. And this allows us to use the DB variable inside our application as db.poll or user. OK. Let's add a user because user is um, a lot less data to create. Um, Mongoose require Mongoose. And then we're going to make a user schema. And schema is just um, the structure of how our data is supposed to look like. Schema. And then the schema function takes in a JSON or a JavaScript object that details the exact uh, structure of the of the schema. So every user is going to need a username, which is type string, and username is going to be required. So required true, and yeah, let's make it unique. So we can query based on the username. And then we also need a password. Oh my god, let's get rid of this. This is also type string. Required true and no I don't it doesn't need to be unique. Um yeah that's that's basically it. And we have to make sure that we export the, the schema. So here we're going to do a mongoose.model user user schema. So doing that uh, do, 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 will allow us to use mongoose to access the users that will live in our database. Uh, we'll come back to this because we're, act we're actually going to keep track of every poll a user makes. But before we do that, we need actually need to make uh, polls. Mongoose. And then um, poll schema new little m. Let's see, what does a poll need? Um, it needs the question, which is, it's actually just a string. We're not going to add any extra features to it. It also needs an option or options to the question, um, which is going to be an array of stuff. Um, I'll get back to that. And then we also need uh, an array of votes, which is going to be tracking all the all the users that voted. So to do that, we're going to do this schema types object ID ref user. OK, so going over this, um, this basically means that we're in voted, it's going to keep track of all the IDs of user objects, which may be a lot, but just bear with me. And then, of course, export mongoose.model poll, poll schema, 
All right. So how are we going to handle options? Um, what I did was actually make its own schema up here. Option schema dot schema. Um, and options will have the actual options name. And it's also going to hold how many votes it has. Uh, which I'm going to it's going to be of type number and we're going to default it to zero. Uh, so this way every time you add a new option it'll start off at zero and then you could add on top of it. Um, so in here we're just going to do option schema to reference the options up here and then oh we also need to uh, keep track of which user um, submitted the poll. So same thing as down here. I'm um, just going to copy this and save to preprints. There's our poll schema. And then user, we, we need to be able to keep track of the polls um, that the user creates. So in here, I think all I did was, man, I really want to get rid of this IntelliSense. It's like blocking everything. But yeah, in polls, we're going to have an array of polls. So types, type is not plural. Mongoose.schema.types types dot object ID ref so as you can see um, we have a reference to the polls in user and to the user in polls this way it doesn't matter which um, which model we query first we have access to each of them uh, so it's easier to to program later on. Um, we will go back to users just because we need to add authentication which I'm not going to do right now but that is basically it for setting up our database. Um, there is something I also want to do but I'm going to do it off screen. And yeah, welcome back. Um, so what I did just now was to I created a, a seed script, so just node seed.js, and this file I created um, while you were away, which is just to seed the database with some dummy data. So we have two users, um, username, password, and it's good to in development to have a password that is easy to remember, so you can test multiple users, and then some polls. Um, so JavaScript frameworks, uh, best mutant, so Wolverine Deadpool, and then some really dumb polls, so like truth or dare, and boolean, true or false. And then the actual seed function, which is all of this. Um, you don't have to worry about that right now. We're gonna we're gonna use each of these functions individually in the in the API itself. And of course, we run the function down here. Um, but what this file does is just to add dummy data to our database so we we don't start from scratch we have something to start the server with um, and don't worry I'll have this uh, yeah I'll, I'll link to this in the description um, but to run the I'm gonna put it here so you can see all the logs but to run the seed you just do an npm run seed and just to check if my database is running, which it is, doing this. Um, these are all the logs, and there is an error. Duplicate key error, both dot users index password one. Hmm. I will I will fix that. But yeah, I'll, I'll fix the seed file um and I'll post 
it in the description. So yeah, we'll have something to do. And then in the next video, we're going to actually create our routes to just do CRUD operations. So create, read, update, and delete polls. And then add authentication and authorization to users. So the passwords are encrypted. So that's what you have look to look forward to. All right, see you in the next video.